Hi, welcome to the Film Crop channel. Today I'm going to explain about a 2013 dramatic thriller called, These Final Hours. Please support me with a like and a comment. That way you can help the channel grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. There are reports everywhere that something terrible is happening in the world. People are calling each other and can't find the words for shock. People everywhere are getting drunk, smashing cars, praying and killing themselves, just to avoid catching all the horror to come. James just wants to get drunk and nothing more than that. That's why he says goodbye to his girlfriend Zoe, gets in his car, and cleans up through all this horror while sipping whiskey from a bottle. James sees a fence in front of him that blocks his path. Suddenly a man with a machete in his hand sits up and tells James to drive. He listens to him and drives. They pull up to a barely walking pedestrian, and the madman runs out of the car with a machete. He kills the innocent man in cold blood and it makes James run away. The crazy man runs after him. James manages to get away from him by hiding in a car. He notices a nearby man has kidnapped a little girl. Nerves are on edge. People are going crazy. The man grabs a hammer from the villain's car and sneaks up on them. He finds the door where the girl is locked in, but he is attacked by the rapists. James takes out the first one with ease, but the second big guy made him sweat, he attacked him with a barbell. Finally, he says that James doesn't have to fight him, because the girl is enough for two. The man is not going to listen and tolerate such suggestions and knocks the rapist out with a hammer. James saves the intimidated girl and puts her in the villain's car. Together they drive away from the cursed house. The girl tells him that her father burned down their house and left her alone, but was supposed to come back for her if she wasn't lost. James takes the girl to a place approximately where her father might have been, but they find no one. The girl is very determined to find her father, but realizing that James is not going to look for her father on their last day of life, decides to get in his car and let it be. They get to know each other. The girl's name is Rose. No one turns up at the house where James' sister is supposed to live. He notices something strange on the second floor and asks Rose to go to the pool while he looks to see what it is. He goes into the bathroom, flooded with water, and sees his sister and her husband who have killed themselves. James also sees three graves in the yard, meant for his sister's three young children. Apparently, they have decided not to wait for Judgment Day. This finally gets to him, for he loved his sister very much. He gets in the car and locks the lock so that the girl does not get in with him. He just can't stand another death of a child, but he looks into her eyes and opens the door. James says they're going to his friend Freddy's big party, which is where he was originally going to go to have a blast and wash this awful day away. The man recalls how Zoe, his lover, had told him the day before that she was pregnant, but that the child was not destined to see the light of day because of the impending end of the world. James felt it would be very painful for him to just sit at home and watch the ocean, so he left his girlfriend and went for a drive. He left her on the worst day for humanity. Maybe that's why he decides to help the little girl, from seeing her as his unborn child? Caught up in flashbacks, James stops the car and Rose gives him a towel with which to bandage his arm. He notices a police car, out of which a cop and his family get out. They head for the library, and James decides they need to get there, too. He asks the family to stay with Rose, but the woman chases them away. The cop stops James and begs him to shoot them all so they don't suffer. He is incapable of doing such a thing himself. James is shocked and refuses the offer. He takes Rose and they drive away from the library. Finally, they arrive at the party. James calls his friend on the radio and he opens the gate for them. Inside, something strange happens. Half-naked people are dancing, kissing and playing Russian roulette while music plays loudly in the background. Everyone is either high on alcohol or drugs and is having sex all over the place. James goes looking for his friend Vicky, but she is nowhere to be seen. As they walk past the room where everyone is having sex, some girl is hitting on the girl, saying she is her mother, but James won't let her take the girl away. They find Vicky swimming in the pool. She is already pretty drugged up and kept waiting for James. Together they go up to the room, where James also manages to dope, but when it comes to making love, there's nothing he can do. The man shares that he recently saw his sister die, but she won't listen and is angry. She only wants sex, she is not interested in his problems. In the meantime, Rose is molested by the girl who thinks she is her mother and forces her to take a drug pill, lying that she will take her to her aunt's house afterwards. Vicky shows James the bunker in which their pictures hang, but he explains that it is not a bunker, but a coffin, because a real bunker would have to go underground for thousands of miles to truly escape whatever is coming at them. She guesses that he's seen Zoe and gets angry and starts chasing him away, but then she gets hysterical and James has to calm her down. 
Her brother Freddie bursts into the room and can't understand why his sister is crying. Vicky blames it all on James, even though he told her the truth, and Freddie runs off looking for him with a gun in his hand. James finds Rose next to the crazy girl. Rose is very sick, vomiting from drugs. The man takes her away, but the girl stands her ground trying to take Rose away. Freddy shows up and points a gun at James. The man asks him to put the gun away, but he doesn't listen to him and is about to shoot him. Vicky shows up and takes the gun from her brother, shooting the crazy girl in the head. James leaves, but can't find their car. He takes the girl in his arms and takes her into the shadows. James gives her water, found there as well. They need the car right away, or the girl won't last long. But where will they go? James notices a drunkard urinating, and takes the car away from him. He decides that no one is waiting for them like their own mother always does, especially on a day like this. They arrive at James's mother's house and the girl is immediately put to bed. The mother says she feels devastated on this day, she's putting together puzzles, drinking wine, sipping a cigarette and just waiting for the end. She asks about James' sister, but he lies that he hasn't seen her. Toward the end of the conversation, though, he can't stand it and makes up the fact that he stopped by her house and saw a note that they had left. This upsets the woman, but otherwise James wouldn't be able to explain why they didn't open the door for his mother the previous afternoon. He asks about the gas in her car, but the woman says the car was stolen. His mother jokes and they laugh, just like old times. Then she shows him the cans of gasoline. He gets out of the car and says goodbye to his mother. The woman tells him he's doing a good job helping the girl find her father, and James leaves. On the way, James makes the girl laugh and makes her smile, because her father probably wouldn't want to see the girl upset. Soon they arrive at her father's house, and the girl immediately runs out of the car. It's a beautiful house outside of town with jazz playing, but it's empty. The girl thinks the family has gone to the pond and runs there, while James decides to take a walk through the garden. No one is there. And then, he finds a group of dead people, not far from the house. Rose's father is among them. In his breast pocket, he still has the same picture of his daughter as the girl. Rose runs to James and asks to see her father's body. He wraps him in a sheet and brings him to Rose so she can't see the rest of the horror. The girl covers her father's eyes and cries. James tries with all his might to pull her away from the dead body, but the girl says she belongs here. She must die with her father. James remembers Zoe sitting in the room on the beach. He tells the girl that he should have been a father himself. The girl doesn't understand, why isn't he with her? James says he made a terrible mistake by leaving her alone. The girl says he still has time. James begins to breathe faster and faster, his eyes fill with determination, and he goes to Zoe, giving the girl one last hug. Rose promises she'll watch him until he's out of sight. James drives away, seeing the girl run after his car until she finally disappears from the rearview mirror. The man begins to cry for the first time. It's impossible to hold back the tears, considering he was soon to be a father himself. He presses the gas harder and harder. There is a rumble in the sky, a voice on the radio telling him that humanity has less than an hour left. Death is coming. Suddenly his car breaks down and then James gets out and starts running to Zoe's house. He screams as he runs into her house, but finds no one inside. Only an empty bed and a window overlooking the ocean. Something is already bearing down on him straight from the skyline. Black clouds filled with red fire from within. He sees Zoe on the shore, but she doesn't want to see him, because he left her on such a scary day. James manages to reassure the girl and puts his arms around her and kisses her. The man pulls her to him and together they meet the end of the world. 